Hey, I'm Scott Grove from Imagine Grove, and in this episode, I want to show you how I, how I do a, epoxy infusion. So in the last episode, I made my American flag uh, cutting board, and even though it was uh, maple and paduke, uh, it would be probably pretty good, but if I infuse this with epoxy, it'll just give it so much more uh, water resistance. Uh, so what I like to do is... Uh, adjust the epoxy by viscosity so that soaks in. I use thermal contraction to help draw it into the wood and then I put it in a vacuum bag and that's my triple threat. But you could do any one of those processes and it would, it would, it would do a pretty good job. So let me, let me show you how I do that. The first thing is uh, the epoxy. Now there are a lot of epoxies on the market. Um, West System is probably one of the, the, the well-known ones and, and, and that works real fine. Uh, the epoxy that I like to use is Smith's epoxy. It's actually a penetrating sealer. The viscosity on this is very, very low. It's close to water. So viscosity, if you don't know what that is, zero is water. The higher the number, um, the thicker it gets. Uh, for example, West System, if you just mix this straight, is a viscosity of 650 centipoids. And if you call any of your technical suppliers, they should tell you how much you can thin this by. So West System, for example, you can thin 10% with a variety of solvents. You can use denatured alcohol, acetone, or a lacquer thinner. And if you thin it 10%, you'll then reduce the viscosity uh, to about 200 centipoids. And that's, that's pretty good. Um, but as I said, uh, this penetrating epoxy, now I did call them, they wouldn't tell me how thin it is. But uh, just my experience says this is close to water, which means it could be 25 or 50, very, very thin. And this stuff is great. You could just brush this on, and this, this is designed to soak into wood. Uh, on a side note, it's not designed as an adhesive. It's not gap filling. It's actually designed to, to soak in. So we're going to use that. There are other uh, System 3. Uh, Zpox, uh, JB, I think JB and Zpox you can thin up to 50%, but again, check with the technical people on that. Anyhow, so that's the first step. The next step is thermal contraction, which means epoxy is thermal setting, which means it heats up when, it, when you activate it. You know, when you mix part A and part B, it gets warm. And if you just brush that on any wood, What's going to happen is it's going to heat up the air in the wood cells. That air is going to expand and create bubbles. Okay, it's going to sort of bubble out. It actually is forcing it up. And that's one reason why you get bubbles if you're working with epoxy. So if I preheat my board, okay, either in the sun or in my, my fact I actually use a heat lamp, heat this up to about 90 to 100 degrees, take it off the heat lamp, now the wood is starting to cool down and contract. And if I put my epoxy on then, the thermal contraction will draw the epoxy in. One, you won't get any bubbles, and two, you'll get deep infusion into, into the wood fiber. And again, you don't even need a vacuum system. But my third threat is I'm then going to take this and put it in a vacuum bag, really suck all the air out of the wood, and really draw that epoxy in. So I'm not putting epoxy on, a, on top as a layer. Okay, that would delaminate, that would be dumb, especially for a, a cutting board, but I'm infusing the wood uh, with the epoxy. So let me show how to do this. I'm going to go heat this up, and then we'll mix up epoxy, and uh, we'll get on with it. So one thing that's a handy little item is at Harbor Freight, I bought this infrared thermometer. Um, it has a laser, you can, you can point it on a surface, and I'll tell you what the, at least the surface temperature is. So uh, right now I'm at about 105 uh, degrees Fahrenheit, which is pretty good. I flip my board over so it's heating up the other side, uh, but that's, that's, that's pretty good. So one thing I want to mention about the uh, Smith's epoxy, it has a lot of solvent in there. That's what makes it so viscous, low viscosity, very thin. And, um, it takes up to two or three days for all those solvents to flash off. Now, maybe the epoxy is cross-linked or cured, but it's very, very important that you let all those solvents flash off. And that would be the same if you add a lot of solvent to any of the other epoxies. It may say, you know, 24 or 12 or 24 hour uh, cure time, 
But if you add solvent, you want to be sure all that solvent has a chance to migrate out. Very, very important before you apply another coat, if you're going to apply another coat. In this case, I think one coat is going to do it, uh, but we'll, we'll see. So let me go get the, uh, the board and we're going to mix this up. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pre-mix my epoxy since it has a long pot life. Then I'll bring my board over so it'll start cooling down and drawing in that material. So let's mix this up. It's 50-50. As you can see, very viscous. It's almost like water. Surface tension of 99.5 degrees. All right. I'm just going to brush that on. You can see how, how runny this is. Boy, that's going to look nice when I get some oil on it. I'm put a nice wet coat. Okay, I got a nice wet coat there, so we're going to um, cover this with wax paper. Make sure it doesn't stick to my bag. And uh, let's uh, exit uh, left, no, exit stage right, and we'll put this in the vacuum bag. Have a breather blanket. We're going to let that sit for 24 hours. I'll pull that out and then I'll let it sit for another two days so all the fumes to uh, evaporate. Then we can give it a light sanding and uh, put some oil on it. I got my triple threat epoxy infusion, a low viscosity epoxy, a thermal contraction by heating up the board first, and then we vacuum bag it. I'll let this sit here for 24 hours uh, for the epoxy to fully cure, and then I'll let it sit for another two days to be sure all those solvents have had a chance to release. We can do a light sanding and oil it up. Okay, it's been a day now, so let's open this thing up. Oh yeah. So there you go. So that's um, a epoxy infusion. I just took this out of the bag. You can see some of the Paduk pigment uh, bled into the maple. You know, I still smell the solvents and it kind of feels a little damp and that's what I was talking about. The solvents need a couple days to really uh, migrate out. So what I'm going to do is let this sit for another couple days and to accelerate this, I can put this in the sun or under my heat lamp, which I'm actually going to do. Okay, so here's the deal. I love making mistakes. Well, not really, but it's certainly very educational. Um, so I used a, a Smith's Very Low Viscosity Two-Part Epoxy. This has a lot of solvents in it to help me with that infusion. What happened is the solvents uh, pulled some of the pigment out of the Paduk and kind of made it all muddy looking, right? So it, it pulled the pigment out of the Paduk and dyed the maple. So I'm going to go, uh, instead of sanding the hell out of this, I'm going to run through the planer and see if we can clean that up. I mean, we'll see what happens and go to the next step. So instead of using the high solvent Smith's epoxy, I would use the West System and thin this only 10% with, say, alcohol or acetone. Uh, there wouldn't be a lot of solvents there. I've had success with that, and I don't think we'll have the, the staining uh, issue. So we'll give that a try. Okay, so I just ran this through the planer. Uh, took a lot of that stain out, although you can see there are some uh, deep stains, which means that epoxy really went deep in. I had to take a good 16th of an inch off of this, so now we're down to 3 eighths, but that's okay for a cheese board. So there's still some stains there. But what I'll do now is I'll give this a, a coat with the West System and see how that goes. So one thing you want to make sure you do is read the instructions, the mixing instructions, because the West System and a lot of epoxies mix with different ratios. Some are 50-50 within the system itself here in the West System. The 207, that's a 3 to 1. The 206 is a 5 to 1. So that's a common mistake. I like to write it right on the can so there's no mistake. That means it's three parts of the resin 
and one part of the hardener. I like to use the, the 207, which is a special uh, crystal clear, so it won't yellow of the wood at all. So this is the one I'm going to be using here. So I'm going to thin it about 10% with lacquer thinner. So there's my board. I'm going to add my hardener, 3 to 1. I want to mix that up first before I add my thinner. Make sure you scrape the sides really well. Just good and mixed. I'm going to add my thinner. That will reduce the viscosity to about 200 centipoids. That's nice and thin. There we go. So, exit stage left. Set it on wax paper. So there we go, epoxy infusion. It's now in the bag. I'm gonna let this sit. It's a 12 hour cure, so I'm just gonna let it sit overnight. Okay, this has been uh, set overnight, and let's take it out of the bag and see what's, uh, what it looks like. You can see this wax paper works really well. Wow, and there we go. So you can see a lot of that epoxy got absorbed or, or forced into the wood grain. And uh, now I'm really confident I got a, a very durable, water resistant uh, cutting board here, or chopping block, or breadboard. Uh, there is a little epoxy glaze on this top surface, so we're going to go ahead and sand this off, and let's go ahead and do that. So there you have it. The epoxy has been infused into the wood. It's soaked into any voids there might be, the uh, grain of the wood, and it's soaked in really well. So uh, I'm really happy with this. Let me spray, it, put some mineral spirits on here. Show what this is going to look like. That's going to be nice. But of course, in the next episode, as I mentioned before, what I want to do is I uh, want to make this into more looking like a flag. My wife thinks it looks like a piece of bacon. So I'm going to show you how to do a dyed crystal calcite mineral inlay. So it looks like blue sapphire. Uh, I had a blue sapphire star here and then a little silver inlay also. So look for that in this next episode and um, we'll see you then.